Chapter 14. Negotiations Begin. Tilden, along with his sister Mary and his nephew Colonel William Pelton are seated in the living room inside Tilden's Gramercy Park Mansion. Accompanying them are John Bigelow, Mr. Smith, and Senator William Thurman from Ohio. The senator reaches into his jacket pocket and pulls out a telegram and hands it to Samuel. The senator and others wait in silence while he reads the message, anticipating his reaction. Finishing the cipher, Samuel crumples it in his hand and annoyance momentarily clouds his mind. After a long moment of tense silence he looks to the senator and asks, why did Congress call off the count? Thurman explains, two and three sets of different elector certificates from the four disputed states have been submitted to Congress are the cause. Samuel walks over to a window, pulls back the curtain and stares out at his supporters. He stands silent for a moment observing. The crowd outside who have willingly been enduring the nippy weather. He knows his supporters are loyal but he doesn't want to see harm come to a single one of them. Disturbed by the certificate stunt, Samuel's annoyance changes to disgust. Two and three sets of certificates? William suggests, Uncle, maybe we can persuade the Oregon electors. Mr. Smith catches William's eye to advise him silently to say no more about Oregon, Mary who rarely misses anything notices Smith and her son's silent exchange. Samuel fires back, I will not be part of any fraud to buy votes. Defending her son's suggestion Mary chimes in, Samuel, there is no need to scold William. He is just making a suggestion. Still agitated by the news Samuel snaps back, not one I will consider. He then looks over at John Bigelow, who is standing a few feet away with his arms folded across his chest. He asks Bigelow, what are your thoughts? Bigelow calmly responds, it's a peculiar situation. Nothing like this has ever happened in the history of our presidential elections before. The representatives must be up in arms. Of course they are, it's deliberate fraud, Senator Thurman declares. Samuel's annoyance is more apparent, of course it is, Republicans are usurping our constitution and anger is spreading like wildfire across the nation. I will surrender this election before I see another day of bloodshed like our civil war. Mary sternly disagrees. Samuel, you must fight this and find out which Southern Democrats are conspiring behind your back and expose them the same way you did with Tweed. Mary pauses for a moment and her son Colonel Pelton chimes in, many of your supporters are Civil War veterans, if you surrender without a fight, they will take up arms on their own to defend your honor. They stay late every night no matter what the weather and anxiously wait to hear any instruction from their elected commander-in-chief and want to be the first to hear if he will instruct them to engage in a fight. These men know the risks and are willing, able and ready to do whatever Tilden asks. Samuel turns back to his sister and the others gathered in the room. You know it is not in my nature to support violence. I pride myself on high principles, integrity of the law, discipline and reason, strategies of the mind. I've never used rough and tumble behavior outside a court of law for justice. Bigelow asks Senator Thurman, did Mr. Hewitt send any communications on how Congress will decide which certificates are legal and not? Samuel, a bit calmer now, he probably is as annoyed by the action as we are and not sure how to proceed, the framers of our constitution never anticipated or provided a law for election fraud of this magnitude. Still stinging slightly from his uncle's rebuff, William cautiously says, Hewitt suggested to me before he left for Washington, that we should organize the Democrats across the country to peacefully protest. Senator Thurman offers some options, the way I see it you have three choices. We can fight, we can back down or we can challenge what our founders prescribed in the Constitution. Looking at no one in particular, Samuel ponders Senator Thurman's options. He turns to Thurman and states. Violence is never a good solution. All here know I rejected Lincoln's civil war before it started and chose to assist the Secretary of War to keep our union together during it. I strongly oppose ever engaging in another civil war, Republicans are power mongers and the Southern Democrats are fools if they believe for a moment Republicans would ever allow them to revive slavery again. 
I have to agree with my sister and nephew, backing down, is not a solution that I find very appealing. I've never backed down from any legal fight. He pauses for a moment, then continues directing his gaze back to Thurman. That leaves your third solution. A legal challenge is the wisest way to fight this farce. Mary asks, can you sue that troublemaker editor from the New York Times John Reed for creating this conspiracy? Bigelow responds to Mary, no, freedom of the press, he adds, Reed set it in motion, but he's nothing more than a pawn in the Republican scheme, Zach Chandler didn't get where he is now, he's a clever man, he used his political power as chairman to convince others Reed's scam could work if they stick together and feed enough money into the effort. Mary shakes her head and asks sarcastically, auctioning off the presidency is not democracy, it's election rigging. Samuel interrupts her, I may lose the presidency, but I will not raffle for it. Bigelow reminds Samuel, the Constitution says nothing about which electors' certificates are legal to submit and count. As you are aware states make their own laws regarding them. Only the President of the Senate has the power to decide which certificates are valid. Senator Thurman reminds Bigelow, that's true, and is another possible problem. The President of the Senate, and, I don't think I need to remind any of you that the Senate is currently controlled by the Republicans. They'll vote along party lines and give credit to the counterfeit certificates for Hayes. What would your legal argument be to stop that action? Samuel picks up a copy of the Constitution book he always keeps on the living room table for reference and says, to throw the election into the House of Representatives where it belongs. Bigelow's nods and smiles. The Democrats have control of the House. Samuel is happy to see that his friend finally understands his line of thinking, but he also realizes his plan is not flawless. Unfortunately, since the 22nd Joint Rule was repealed due to Democrats earlier this year, the Republicans will refuse to adopt it because it would favor you. William adds to the confusion when he reminds them, the death of Grant's vice president could complicate the issue further, with Republican Senator Ferry acting as president pro tempore of the Senate. Samuel smiles. His bias be damned, he walks to his desk with his copy of the Constitution, places it on the desk and sits in his office chair. Samuel looks at Thurman and instructs what he needs him to do. Please send Congressman Hewitt a wire tonight so he can inform others in our party they must try to work across the aisle with Republicans to see what deals they're willing to make to advert a second civil war. Tilden theorizes neither President Grant nor Hayes would want the threat of another war hanging over their heads caused by their parties cheating the election. Both men fought valiantly in our horrific civil war and saw the destruction and death of thousands up close and personal. 